this way. Hello, hello. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey I am um, very, very good. It is awesome to be here. I hope I sound well. Yes. Um, and all of that good stuff. Uh, greetings from Dhaka in Ooh. Senegal. Um, and I absolutely love the title of this live. You know, I know it's career based, but also about challenging the perceptions of Africa. So mm. it's great to be here in one of the most dynamic parts of Africa. Africa is indeed. To those listening now, those who are going to catch up later, it is indeed a continent bursting with 54 incredible nations of different languages, cultures, customs, beliefs. It's absolutely stunning. So it's really great to speak to you here from there. And I would like to apologize for the lateness as well, but I know that this will be an awesome conversation. Thank you. And it's lovely again to be able to like have this that conversation with you and i'm kind of je low-key jealous because like i'm hearing the beat sounds and everything and this england is cold <laughs> oh gosh no honestly i i mean i'll be in your shoes soon but i do kind of look forward to it because yeah like october so senegal is the fifth country i've been to this month there's been a lot of movement wow. um a lot of flights a lot of time zones just taking time out for myself as much as possible. It can be pretty busy. Um, so I do look forward to spending a bit of downtime in London for a few weeks. Yeah, definitely. And um, before we start, I want to you to kind of like introduce yourself and um, tell us like three interesting facts about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Hannah Jala. So I'm the founder of We Are Black Journals, hence me. <laughs> on this page, um, which the awesome flow is also a part of too. Um, I'm an international broadcast journalist and presenter. Is it two interesting facts or three? Um, three. Three. So the first interesting fact is I have five older brothers, making me the last born and the only girl. The second interesting fact is that I visited my 50th country this year. And the third interesting fact <laughs> is I have a birthmark on my lower back, which is kind of shaped similarly to the continent of Africa. Wow. I will take a photo <laughs> and share it to whoever wants to know. Yeah. But it's true. <laughs> no, yeah. that, that like, last fact is really like interesting, especially because, like, one, you're in an African country right now, and it's just like, yeah, it's like a whole full circle moment. Um, and because you kind of like, because you mentioned that you're a broadcast journalist, um, career journey and stuff like what what kind of what's the yeah. life limit, I guess like for you to want to become a journalist absolutely so uh I had a passion in English particularly um from a young age um and I remember around the age of 15 my English teacher Miss Barnett said I love how you express yourself not only am I going to push you up a group but I really think you should look into journalism and I remember going to Wikipedia searching it up and just printing out uh, the page and it was a woman presenting news she's in a really cold place like London ah. <laughs> and she's wearing a puffer coat and a microphone and I thought wow that's so interesting so it's essentially someone that's telling stories I love to tell stories why don't I look into that and I would say that I wasn't as proactive um, until I went to university and that's when I started doing a lot of independent work I created a blog which for any aspiring journalist or anyone that wants to hey or anyone that wants to really propel in their career journey, get a blog. It is one of the most rewarding things you can do because you can always look back and sort of have an understanding of your journey and how far you've gone. Yes. So I was building that blog, building it, building it. Uh, again, in uni, you don't really spend a lot of time at uni. Um, so I was very fortunate to be in London um, and attended so many networking events, uh, building my profile, uh, was quite active on Twitter as well. So when certain job opportunities came, like the first one that I got with the BBC, I was very much so aware of it. And I applied, uh, I think, twice or three times. Got rejected twice, got it. Um, and then I got the third one. Um, and it was a graduate tra trainee scheme, which is what the BBC do quite a lot, as well as yeah. quite a few other broadcasting organisations. And it was for a year long. 
Page, uh, one of the best interviews ever. And eight years later, here I am presenting probably one of my biggest projects ever, also for the BBC and CBC. So it's been an incredible journey of travel, exploration, self-development, mm -hmm. and really honing my craft and skills. And I'm so grateful for the journey. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, no, that's that's such an amazing like journey because again it kind of like talks about the importance of role models. Like your teacher yeah. saw something in you, was like you should do this and stuff. Yeah. So that's really awesome. And um, speaking of like your career, what has been your main like highlights that you just been like, wow, I can't believe I got to do that or got to interview yeah. that person or yeah. I would say uh, doing my TEDx was pretty amazing. Um, that was at a time where I felt like I was just still navigating my career path, but just knowing that I was able to achieve something like that was, yeah, so rewarding. And it's, you know, the message behind it is something that I keep very dear to me. And it's about how to be positively delusional. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that I'm a big believer of. Um, yeah, so that's why that TEDx is such a highlight. Uh, uh, another highlight has probably been just the, um, you know, amazing figures that I've been able to, to interview. So I've interviewed some of like, the biggest artists across Africa, uh, even people that are on a, a slower scale. Like I'm so, a big highlight has been the conversations that I've had um, and knowing that there are people that look like me and that are from this incredible part of the world. So it's kind of hard to be specific with yeah. that one. And I'd say another one has probably been doing a film with my grandma, Rest Her Soul, um, and it was titled Seven Questions to My 107-Year-Old Grandma. Wow. That's incredible. And again, it's, it just kind of like shows the um, possibilities of journalism, like how you can um, travel the world, how you can like interview people, and you're able to kind of like um, stick to your own voice in terms of like being able to talk about African um, like African stories and stuff like that so that's really cool and um, why do you think it was important to like highlight um, black journalists and black stories through We Are Black Journals and also like um, showing a positive side of Africa through your um, Ajala um, travels as well so yeah I think um if we look at just the state of media today and the state of racism today mm -hmm. and the state of racism a hundred years ago, black people have always been perceived as the bottom barrel. Black people have always been stereotyped the most, segregated the most, criticized the most. It's very unfortunate to see these systemic behaviors and stigmatizations happen over centuries. Mm -hmm. And in order to bring ourselves out of that, we have to liberate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that liberation is normalized now. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that the validity of black life always has to be justified, um, but it's important that we find a safe space and a community. So it's really incredible to know amongst, you know, not just we are black journals or mm -hmm you know, the communities that I've built, but there are so many other communities in tech, in sport, in finance, whatever, mm. that are wanting to celebrate the validity of black life, that want to <laughs> empower the validity of black life, that want to challenge those stereotypes and, um, you know, those negative connotations as well. So that's so important. It's a shame that it still has to exist considering how far the black community has come, but it's important that it does exist because for the future generation, we want it to be normal. Where you walk into a newsroom in London, in the UK, yeah. one of the most di it should be one of the most diverse exactly. parts of the world, essentially. That should be reflective of the society that mm -hmm. these um, broadcasters and journalists and producers and editors are working for. Yes. You know, when a Stormzy music video drops, you shouldn't be shaking on your boots. There should be someone yeah. within two meters of you that can tell you who Mel from Mel Made Me Do It is. Exactly. Um, it's incredibly important. And that is one of the driving forces behind We Are Black Journals, being in a surrounding where, um, you know, uh, we weren't reflective of the, the society and the audiences that we were speaking to. Yeah. But at the same time, I was coming across 
incredible black journalist like Hibak, who's just joined Stock Call. Hey, Hibak. Um, and just many other people, uh, not just taking up space, but just doing an incredible yeah. work. Exactly. They're doing an incredible job at what they do. And they are, we are not a monolith and we exist in so many different spaces. And I thought it was very important to have a platform to celebrate that. I did it for us. I didn't do it for the validity mm-hmm. of white people or yeah. allies. But I understand the importance of allyship. And I understand if you, if you look at the foundations of journalism and how a majority yeah. of the people at the top are white, yeah. if those people are in your corner and generally want to help, that genuinely helps to change yeah. things. So that's been another very interesting driver. Um, with my travel company here in Senegal and Dakar, where I am. Um, It was through my traveling experiences when I first left the UK in 2019 to want to immerse myself in the continent. I've now been to 15 African countries. Cannot wait to go to the rest of them. Um, And I really wanted people to see what I saw. But that only came from a stranger on Instagram saying, I love how you, um, you show Africa. You should host group trips. And that just got me thinking. And then people express interest. And 15 people have come on this group trip. Um, And it's been absolutely amazing. Um, Thank goodness for social media because it's really... And the travel blogging community is put into our faces, um, you know, things that we're not seeing in mainstream media. People are sharing their experiences of how beautiful, gorgeous and dynamic the African continent is. Exactly. And I think that's really amazing, especially even with the traveling community. We're seeing more black travelers share their, share their experience within the African continent and elsewhere. So it's really um, cool and to be able to create a safe space, as you said, for black people um, and that were so talented, whether it's in journalism or something else. So um, yeah, and like me personally, I've really uh, been blessed from like the We Are Black journals, like in terms of just seeing people that look like me uh, doing successful in journalism. And um, what are your top three advice that you'd give to upcoming um, journalists, especially journalists of like colour, um, who are often like not represented in the industry? What kind of advice would you give them? Mm. I would say um, look to the light because not every industry um, is perfect. Some are lacking in diversity, some are land lacking in gender equality, yeah. uh, some are lacking in probably some leadership skills. Not everywhere is going to be perfect, but look to the light. And by that, I mean, look to the people that look like you that yeah. are already doing that and bossing it. They don't have to be the advocate for change. Yeah. Um, they simply just want to be someone doing their job. And you have these examples. You have We Are Black Journals. You're part of the community. You'll never be left alone in that area. Um, it won't be easy. It won't be easy at all. But please, 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 the last thing that, would, that should ever limit you is your skin color. Yeah. That will not limit you. It will empower you. Be strong. Keep your tribe close to you. And just know that this is an industry that you're passionate about. It's made for you. It's not just about grabbing a seat at the table. Yeah. You can own the whole entire table. Exactly. Don't see yourself small. Look to the light because... There is not a single industry or organization that is perfect yeah. at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for all of that advice. And just um, like hearing your story is very inspiring, honestly. And that, that this is one of the reasons why I wanted to start this series to share um, people's like journeys, not just career wise, but just like um, them using their talents and like, empowering others. So. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Florence Fadeke, you social media whiz. This is such an incredible um, page. I love your content. I love the the work that you do. I cannot wait to see the next awesome interview that you do in the series. Um, And I look forward to us having another chat soon. Everyone, please support the amazing work that the Flow Journal blog is doing. Also, please connect with us at We Are Black Journals. You'll find my handle through there. It's Hannah Jala. I travel a lot and I'm a journalist, um, but I will be in London soon just to relax and I really look forward to it. But thank you so much again for having me. Welcome. Okay. Bye. And from Dakar. <laughs>